Maybe you can see some beautiful uh, clouds outside. <laughs> yes, kind of weather is not good, huh? Because it's cloudy. Uh, it's okay. After hot summer, we are happy with this weather. <laughs> yeah, all right. So here in Japan, it's raining. We have typhoon, but the typhoon left. So we're lucky that typhoon didn't come here in Japan. All right. Yeah. And so guys, today we're going to talk about how to communicate with your dog. So my, my special guest for tonight is, is uh, Miss Sarah Marvin, and she's a certified trainer of a dog. Uh, so let's going to hear from here what, you know, there are different kinds of, uh, you know, trainers uh, speaking of dogs. So let's hear from you. Okay, so Sarah, can you tell a short background about yourself on how you get started? Uh, my mom used to joke and tell me that I first said dog, then mom and dad. Oh. <laughs> I feel like this, um, that's my life passion actually. And I always wanted a dog. I always wanted to work with dogs. And, uh, you know, when you have some passion, I believe when you follow your heart, you always, um, you must be successful in this. So I started a long time ago, over 30 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, when I, my parents finally said, yeah, okay, you can have a dog. And I drove with my dad, took me to the dog shelter, and we brought um, one dog home. Her name was Tika, and uh, her, she taught me first steps in the dog world. After this, I had many dogs, and I must say, every dog taught me something new and uh, gave me some new opportunities. So... In these last 30 years of working with dogs, I've been in many dog sports. I've learned a lot um, and uh, I ended up actually in search and rescue and in um, house pets trainings, um, uh, behavior problems and um, I had this opportunity to train dogs all around the world. So I must say, I must say I have a big experience probably with dogs yeah. and people. And at the moment I'm running something called uh, Zero to Hero. People can find me on Facebook and, or Instagram. And uh, my focus at the moment is to extract all this big experience working with people and their dogs and um, trying to help them actually to enhance their living together um, in the way to make a better focus at the dogs, to how to behave with dogs and um, teach them how they have to think to better communicate with dogs because that 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 helps actually in their life together so that helps uh, having a dog this is just lifestyle actually and uh, of course if you want some lifestyle you want this lifestyle to be good <laughs> hmm? yeah hmm. So what are the, can you give some tips to our viewers on how to, you know, communicate or, or if they're having problems or how, uh, how to communicate with their dogs or things like that. So can you give some tips on how to communicate with their dogs? Well, this is a huge question. We can talk about this next few years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in short, number one, I always say have a patience with your dogs and understand that they don't understand you. Imagine that you have some small cute alien at home and this small cute alien thinks that you are alien that is way bigger than them. So 
um, when you put yourself yourself in this situation, then you understand that actually um, you need to learn their language and they need to learn your own language, our language, human language. So number one, have understanding and have patience with your dog. And um, as I always say, reward them for everything you think they're doing good. And if they are doing something wrong, don't punish them, but stop and think, what did you do wrong? Many often times you just have to um, rearrange your everyday management of your everyday life and the dog will understand and behave better. So if you have a young puppy, young dog at home or brand new dog, the dog will maybe like to chew your shoes, which is very often. Hmm. Then a uh, punishing dog will just uh, ruin your his trust in you. And maybe he will stop doing this at the moment. But when you after you leave, he will do it again. He will know that he is not allowed to do that only while you are there. So it's better to change... To, to do a little bit of management at your home and put your shoes into the closet or somewhere high that your dog cannot reach this. Mm -hmm. So your dog will not have this experience and he will not do it. So a lot of things we can manage, which we, we can just manage without special training of our dogs. So what are the basic, uh, like what you said, uh, the basic uh, obedience that a uh, uh, dog you, you train your dogs what are the basics i would start with the i would start this is a good question of course uh i would start with the something that is very important when people bring the dog home is it puppy or uh, adult dog doesn't other dog doesn't matter they always think that we have to start with basic obedience like sit stay walking on the leash come lay down those are some basic obedience things but with this obedience ex we can teach the dog this obedience exercises every time you know they say like you can teach all dog new tricks that's absolutely true <laughs> so when we bring the dog home first we have to give him time so he can figure out what's going on because he's in some new environment with some new creatures i would say so some new human beings and he has to understand um what's going on so if we start to teach the dog to sit and lie down for example a weight or something like this the, this will not help the dog to figure out what is going on yes. so it's better to let him um to teach him where is his place uh where does he eat when he eats, take him for a walk um, so the dog is able to see and explore the place where he will live, the house. Uh, the dog will explore the, the place where they, where you will go for a walk. Mm -hmm. So give him a few weeks to just to get used to new conditions that he suddenly fell in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Uh, the best way, if you ask me for the start, just to keep with you some small treats or the food that they daily eat with you and reward the dog for everything what he's doing good. For example, during the day, whatever you do, if your dog comes to you and just say hello, he just comes to you, you just give him a little, some small treat. So you start to reward and him for things he's already doing good because dogs are already good and they're trying to communicate with you and they're trying to get used on the situation and sometimes they do some things that we people really don't like but they're doing their best dogs are not mean creatures and they don't sit at home and make a plan how to make something bad and how to destroy something if dogs are destroying house it means it's it's our fault it's always fault it's always human fault our fault so we didn't do good management for example we left the puppy alone to roaming around the the, the apartment so of course the puppy will try to find some fun 
So that will be our furniture or shoes or something that he can chew. Or if he's too long, he'll have to be in the house because he's not able to go out. So those are all the things that we can manage with our dogs. And then later on, after we give to our dogs some time to get used and we reward all the time what they are already doing well, then we can start to think to maybe enroll to some dog school. This is always good. Or um, today you have a lot of online courses also and start to educate ourselves how to make better living with our dog and how to understand each other. And then we can start with some basic obedience. But definitely, I would say start with basic obedience and start with socialization also, which is super important as soon as possible. Hmm. So which one is a need to learn first, the dog or the, the owner of the dog? The owner of the dog. The of the dog right? <laughs> yes. Because some people, they don't have time. They don't have Sorry. time train their dog so they they uh they uh, call somebody like uh you know trainer who can train my dog because i don't have time i work full time you know for my job so they bring their dogs to some place like school like what you've told us you know they can teach my dog things like that but they they need to learn also right yes uh, my personal preference is not to give the dog to someone else to train him it's better that you go with your dog to the school. Because if somebody else trained the dog, I can take your dog and train him and he will be perfect and great. But the moment when I give the dog to you, even if I will, usually the, those programs are like, uh, I train your dog and then we go through all the, all the exercises together and then I give your dog back. The dog, dog is not stupid. And he will figure out very soon that you actually don't understand really what you have to do. So the dog will start to be disobedient again. Let's call it disobedient. Because you wouldn't know how to react in different situations because you will not understand what's going on or you will not know your dog. If you go with your dog to the school, uh, that's a different thing because you go there. Your dog is socializing. Well, dog, your dog is socializing. And you look at your dog and learn how your dog communicates, how your dog behaves. Every dog is different like us. So that's very important. While you are going through this journey of training your dog and raising your dog, socializing your dog, you actually learn everything what you need to know. And you know your dog. You, you, when you go home and you have some other situation, you know how to behave and how to communicate with your dog so it will go well. So that's very important that you educate your dog, uh, yourself, I'm sorry, and then your dog. So my suggestion also is to the people who want to get the dog to educate themselves before they get the dog. Today, it's really easy to go online and find a lot of very good books, very good uh, courses, uh, lots of knowledge that you can get and uh, be ready for the dog. One more thing is that uh, very often that I've seen in my experience that dog, people very often buy dogs by their appearance. So they say like, oh, I want Husky because he looks beautiful. And they live in the small apartment that they don't have, they hardly have some small park to take the dog for a walk. So Husky is definitely not the dog or German Shepherd or some big breed. Or some people say like, okay, um, we want some very small dog um, and uh, Bulldog, for example, or something like this. Okay, Bulldog is not so really small, but... But this is not super active dog. They are great dogs. Bulldogs are very great dogs. So funny. Uh, but if you are going for hiking every weekend all around the mountains, um, you live a very active life run, running the bike and you want your, to have your dog with you, I'm not sure that Bulldog would be the right cho choice. So this is also very important to pick the breed that really fit to your lifestyle. Mm. That's 
That's number one. Number two, uh, even if you go and um, it's also nice to go to the shelter and uh, rehome the dog, but you also can talk with the people who work in shelter because they mostly know their dogs and you can pick the dog with the right character um, that will fit your lifestyle. That, that's very, very important. If you are buying a uh, pure breed, it's very important to find really good uh, licensed breeder. The breeder that have a license for breeding, the dog that has a pedigree. That's important because then we can see what was he, he, uh, the parents and grandparents from this dog. It doesn't say just what is the family of the dog, but it says that is there any diseases at this dog because we don't want to buy a dog that will die in one year or we will have a major problems with him because this dog will suffer then. So we need responsible breeder. The breeder who is also taking care of the puppies in the way we can socialize the puppies too while they are still in the in the litter the, to do a lot of job. And this is 50% of successful and happy life with our dog preparation wow thank you so much for the information i didn't know that i know that some people buy dog because it's cute you know it's so, <laughs> exactly. it's so i don't think about you know uh, thinking about where they come from what their backgrounds you know are they are they can relate to our you know standard of living the way we live you know so we don't think about that. yes hmm. And that is very, very important when buying dogs. Dogs, you have to, you know, uh, to uh, make sure that dog can, you know, can live with in your own, you know, in your own. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Because so, it's also um, it's also important to say, even if you buy a small breed, people very often think if the breed, if it's small breed or or just a small dog. Um, that they don't have to uh, move so much. So they, they very often, they just keep them in the house. They don't take them for a walk very often. Or they say, oh, they don't have to walk so much. It's 10 minutes is, a, is enough. No, because a uh, small dog is, a, of course, it's easier to handle small dogs. But we must, we must know also that the small dogs has a, they have needs like big dogs. They need to go out. They need to sniff around because this is like Facebook for them, you know, or, or some newspapers. So they need to know what's going on in the neighborhood. They, they need to socialize. They need to meet other people, other dogs. Uh, they need to exercise. So they need to run. Of course, they, uh, some chihuahua will not need to run like some Doberman. Of course, but they still need to play, to, to go out and move, to, to move their bodies and, and keep their muscles and stay healthy. So they also need the training. The small dogs need the training as the same as the big dogs. The, in these parts, this is not a um, big difference. Hmm. So when buying dogs, you have to know if that dog's uh, are, are all dogs have a, like a kind of they like running or they just want to stay at home or some dogs just always want to go out or they have that kind of uh, attitude or uh, that mostly depends on breed mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, some breeds are more likely to be less active and some dogs are more likely to be more active and uh, this is also part of research which you can do before you decide to buy a dog. Because sometimes people just want a dog and then when they do the research, they realize like, wow, I can't have a dog <laughs> because this is impossible for me to give him everything what he needs. So the dog is living creature that really has its, its needs. And uh, we have to see, I, I, I'm saying this again, the lifestyle our lifestyle has to match with the breed. So if you buy a Border Collie or Belgian Shepherd or German Shepherd or Doberman 
or some working breed. You have to plan on this that you will have spend more time training with them and do some activities, taking them for longer walks, and then they will be happy, otherwise they will destroy your house for start. <laughs> and they will start to make problems. Um, I like to make fun, and but this is half truth. But I like to say like tired dog is good dog. <laughs> but that in some way it's good, not just because he's tired and sleep. It's because you feel uh, fulfill his needs, and then when you come home, he's satisfied. He he is happy like. We go somewhere for a walk or we spend a good time with our friends or family. Uh, we had a nice food or whatever event you can imagine that you come home and you say like, oh, I feel so good. Mm. You are calm and, and, and satisfied and happy. And this is what is happening the same with the dogs. Mm. So what about your dogs right now? What kind of dog? What kind of dog do you have? Do you uh, um, a working I'm dog? Or? To show you two. Yes, yes. You show us yeah, yeah. They're 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 sleeping at the moment. This is also some topic topic which we can talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they sleep. They're here. So that's me. She just doesn't want to wake up, but oh, the Kiva, did you hop? Here is Kiva. Oh, he's so cute. Kiva, tutu. Kiva? Yeah, that's Kiva. She's my uh, border collie. And uh, she's search and rescue dog. A she rescue dog. dog. What do you mm -hmm. She is searching for the people. Oh. Uh, when they get, got lost in the forest, in open areas, or shoo, my dogs are around me. <laughs> yeah. So they search for the people when, when ha for example, when the earth earthquake happened, uh, then the buildings collapsed down. So some people stay trapped under the uh, debris of collapsed buildings. So I train dogs to find these people. Ooh. Or if somebody goes into the forest or some mountains and they get got lost, and then we send the dogs to search for them. Oh, so, so that's their those are search and rescue dogs. Here is another one. Here is another one. Hey, is how are you? <laughs> I just, she just so woke up. She's not serious. So what's, and, and how, what is uh, you know what is uh, her expertise? She <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a rescue dog from a dog shelter. She's eight years old, and uh, she was uh, one of um, puppies that was um, somebody threw them into the forest. Mm. So some good people found them and rescued them. So I took one of the puppies, so she's now my little princess. <laughs> yeah, so cute. Yeah, wow. So if you buy dog, can uh, if I want a rescue dog, are you gonna are you gonna say uh, I want a rescue dog? So you know there are dogs that can do rescues. There are dogs that can can cannot do rescue, right? Um, not all dogs can rescue people, right? Sorry. Not all dogs can rescue people, right? Uh, no. Um, this is some question that we can talk about uh, working dogs yeah. or dogs. So the dogs can do a lot of things, as we know. And generally, it's always good to do something with your dog. Um, for dog, is the same if he do the tricks at home or he's going to search for people. For dog, work is work. Only it depends uh, what we have decided that we're going to do with this dog. This is also something that we have to know before we get the dog. would be better. Like, I want a dog to run agility, then probably I would buy some Belgium Shepherd or Border Collie. I will not buy Pug or Chihuahua or 
I don't know, some heavy, big dog, you know, uh, some, some breeds, of course they will do it, but they will never be so successful like other breeds, like Border Collie, for example. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, also we have, for example, military use uh, Belgian Shepherds a lot because they are light, they are, they are, uh, they have amazing endurance in, in everything. They learn uh, very fast, they are very trainable. So, those dogs are, are really good for military or for the police or also we use them in search and rescue we use labradors in search and rescue because they have amazing notes also like those other breeds as i said so it depends what you're gonna do with your dog and not every dog is for every work so mm -hmm. if you buy some hunting dog so probably they will do hunt that, that that's the best for them right so you will not buy a hunting dog to take care of sheep or um, you know so that's very important and unfortunately sometimes some breeds become very famous this happened re recently with the belgium shepherds and then uh people think because they watch the movie or they see them in some commercials or somewhere and they say like, wow, those dogs are so smart. We're going to buy this dog because it looks cool. It listen, it do everything. So we're going to have this dog. Unfortunately, at that time when the Belgian Shepherds became very popular a few years ago, a lot of Belgian she Shepherds ended up in the dog shelters because people bought the dogs and they realized they cannot handle this. Mm. Not every dog is for everyone. This is really very, very important thing to, to, to know your lifestyle again and choose the dog you want to have. Uh, so uh, it's like with the people, not all of us can do everything. Yes, exactly. Mm. But each of us has some talent, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. And we can be very good in something and then in something else maybe not and that's the same with the dogs yes that's why that's why where people like find what you are good at find what you love to do find what you exactly. love how to do right so that's also the dog so if you you love to do and that's the dog you want you want to do so you can work together right so exactly yeah, can you tell me about the difference of sports dogs? So what are the sports dogs, dogs doing? The sport dogs, uh, I'm just saying that it's a, all, uh, all dogs that do something, they're work dogs, but you have a kind of service dogs and sport dogs. Sport dogs could be agility dogs. or mm -hmm. so, so you have many sports that you can compete with dogs in. And working dogs is a more like, Police dogs, the military dogs, or search and rescue dogs, or uh, uh, dogs that are service dogs for people with disabilities or blind people. Mm. We call them working dogs. Sport dogs are for frisbee or or uh, agility or obedience competitions. So you just compete with your dogs and have fun and and doing it. Uh, like any other sport, but uh, the sport you do with your dog. <laughs> yes. That, that's but the difference. If you like sports and you want your dogs to go with you, the sports are your Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's <laughs> many sports today that you can do with your dog. Mm. So it's really, really important to be informed before you get your dog. I've I met so many people, they say like, they buy a dog and then suddenly decide to do some sport or something, but they don't have the exact breed that it will be successful or they have some other problems. Of course, sometimes it happens that people just decide to have a house pet and they, they pick a good dog for house pet, but then by the time get educated more, of course, because they, they get into the dog world and they say like, well, maybe we would like to do something with this dog. Then it's time that you pick the the sport or 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 any kind of work with your dog that suits your dog. Mm. Because for me, 
when I work with dogs, for me, is the first, first the first question in training is dog's welfare. Does dog enjoy the same like I enjoy the training? Because we can see, of course, that people are, the first thing is results for people sometimes. And then some people do it well in a good way and they get great, amazing results. But sometimes the dog is not really happy through the training process because they do it by force. Mm. So another thing which I would like to say that when people decide to train their dogs, and they decide to take some mentor or trainer or um, they go to school to check very well how they treat the dogs in the school. Do they work in positive way? Do they reward the dogs or they put the chalk chains on them and choke them? Or do anything by force? And what systems do they use for dogs? Today, we have uh, many systems that we can work with dogs. But for me, I think that everyone who has a dog has to ask one and first question about animal welfare. Does this dog is happy? Will this dog will be injured or suffer during the training? Or he will be happy and have fun like we will have fun? Because if, dog, if our dog is happy and he has a fun, then we will feel better. Hmm. I honestly can say, and I can, because some people do the wrong training because they don't know. So it's, it's not their fault. They just start with some trainers. The trainer explained them why this is good to force the dog to do something um, because of his security or whatever. And uh, people believe this because they don't know. I mean... Look at us, uh, we go to, for example, take simple ex example. Most of us go to the fitness, to the gym, right? And if you don't know nothing about gym, I was at that point. I could go wherever and everybody could tell me anything. And even if you go on online and try to research a little bit, it's such a big amount of information that you have no idea actually what is right, what is wrong. Okay, by time you figure out what works for you, what not. But it's the same with the dog training. There is so many trainers, so many schools, so many theories. But one thing is simple. Do you reward the dog or do you punish your dog? How do you train the dog? And then decide what is good for your dog. Even if you go to the school, and you see that your dog is not happy what you're doing with your dog. You see that you feel stressed and anxious and you go home not really happy with this. Then stop doing this. No matter what the trainers are telling you. I've been then done, done that. I started to train dogs 30 years ago when there was no positive training. Everything was done by force at, at my time. And I started there. I've been there, done that. And I know how I felt miserable when I had to punish my dog all the time again and again. But I thought this is what we have to do. And so many people think, well, but today we have so many options to learn and see how to train our dogs that the first thing is animal welfare and it's easy and we can do it one of the ways they are clicker training or any kind of philosophy by clicker training if the trainers are following the, the science training science behavior science if they are certified then they for sure doing something really good most of them we you can find so many good trainers today mm -hmm. So animal welfare would be the first thing that I would think when uh, I go to the school now. So that's, yeah, that's first thing. Yes, that's a very good information. I've never, I never know about, you know, buying dogs and how to you should choose your dog. I thought it's just like a, you're buying a car, that that car is... <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but you don't, you know, you don't uh, look at what's inside, things like that. So thank you, thank you so much for that uh, information, the value you gave us. So before we end up this, uh, can you, uh, what message that you want to give to uh, our viewers about communication and how b buying dogs or what, what dogs to choose, you know, to live with their family and live with their own house as like a family members? Well, I would just uh, repeat everything in short. Before you decide to buy a dog, uh, just uh, inform yourself, read a little bit, find a breed that is really that really fits to your family. If you have a kids or you don't have kids, you live some active life or you live uh, some more calm life. What kind of dog do you want? Are you able? Uh, one more thing, are you able to afford the dog? Dog is not cheap. You have to take your dog to vaccinate him, to feed him, to veterinarian. Uh, so this is also one more thing. One more thing is that you sit and talk with your family. Does every family member is ready to have a dog in the household? Are they ready to follow the training tips? and everything how we will do because everybody in the household should behave the same with the dog. So those are very important things that people should know before they get the dog. After they get the dog, start with socialization. Just show to the dog world in the best positive way. Don't, don't force him to something that he's afraid. Let he allow, allow him to have kind of control over what he is afraid of, what he's not. Dogs are also going through the uh, development stages. So in some stages, they are more scared of something and later on they are not. So you, this is everything you can learn online or in, go to some school. Let your dog, and have a patience. Understand the dog that he doesn't understand you and he also has to learn, but he doesn't have Google and, and courses. He's learning by just observing you. So mm. be kind and have a patience toward your dog. And then if you do all of this, your lifestyle and your life will be better. And you will enhance your own life, which is very important. And then you will be living in harmony with your dog. Yeah, yes, yes. And then friends and everybody else around mm, you. You're, you're living in a house yeah. together, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, information, the value, you, all you give and the tips that uh, before buying the dog and how to communicate with your dog. So do you have any, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, uh, courses or training, not for the dogs, for the owner of the dog that they want <laughs> They want to learn before we buy dogs so they can ask you what kind of dog do I need to buy so you have to of course you have to ask them what kind of uh, you know environment you are you right what kind of you know as uh, if you are busy you are working you know if you, how much time do you have for your dog you know yeah. so if people want to ask you about that and reach you out uh, where they can uh, so people can find me at the moment on the Facebook or in the on the Instagram. Um, they can find many interesting tips for everyday life with their dogs. And um, I am really uh, concentrated at the moment uh, to working on dogs, concentrate how to enhance and how to make a better concentration at dogs so they can train, they can learn better, and how to how to set. Uh, people's dog mindsets so of what kind of mindset you have to have uh, to, tr to better train your dog. So to enhance uh, and do better communication with the dog. Um, uh, I am open for, open for any question and I'm willing to help. Uh, also, we are doing online consultations one-on-one uh, -on -one and uh, we are preparing now some really cool courses that will see the light soon um, that will be live and uh, online so everything what you're interested in you can contact me on uh, those two profiles so it's zero to hero dog and you can find us on facebook 
or Instagram. Zero to hear a dog. Zero to hear a and dog. And me here, I appreciate highly your work. You are really helping people in a big way. <laughs> Thank you so much, and thank you so much also for your time uh, that you uh, come and uh, you know share something about it. And I learned a lot also because I really don't know how to <laughs> how to. You know, <laughs> now you can buy a dog. <laughs> I love, oh, it's so cute! I like it. Very, I like I like it, but that's all I know. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much, and I'm gonna put all your uh, information in descrip uh, on the description. So guys. If you have questions more about dog, don't ask me because I don't know. Dogs go to her, reach out to her, connect with her, and she will uh, let you know what dogs fit Today, for Today, people really can educate themselves. Just go online, read, ask. Find some local dog school and go there and talk with them. Even if you don't have a dog, they will give you some information for sure and some yeah. good advice. There are some dog trainers locally. You can find them. They will even... They are even willing to help you to pick the dog and help you to find the best puppy for you. And you yeah. know, just uh, ask the 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 people who are really know about dogs, so you can uh, yeah. get the right dog for you. All right. So thank you, thank you so much, Tara. And <laughs> yeah, yes, and talk to you soon, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you get value with this. And see you next time. Bye, bye, Tara. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.